Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Discord Java series. This episode, I'm going to teach you how to make commands. My little butter pee, can you she got a tan? Girl, you need a man. And he need them bands. And y'all need a plan. And y'all can be planned. Do you understand? What the fuck did I'm saying? Do you understand? Okay, so yeah, let's get right into it. Um... So what I mean, what I mean by commands is like whenever you t go into like a Java server, or a I mean a Discord server that uses you know a bot for example, you can have certain commands like play music, or anything like that. So let me show you an example. So on this server here, um, we have these a bunch of little bots here. So we'll use um, the trivia bot. So if we type trivia help, it says, oops, trivia help. Then you know that happens, right? So how do we get our own bot to do certain things whenever we type a certain word, right? It's actually with events, like what we already learned last episode. So, um, yeah, so, um, well, we're going to try another command real quick. So, for example, some some uh, bots just use, like, regular, like, words. But some of them, they require you to have certain, uh, like, uh, signs in front of the word so you know it's a command. So, for example, like, rhythm, the rhythm bot requires you to do um, I believe um, exclamation point rhythm whenever you type a command so exclamation point you do rhythm rhythm stats oh well, I guess I can't do that so let's try stats all right whatever but the, but the point is you know if we type exclamation point and then you know a command then it'll do that command right so yeah that's what we're gonna try and do with our commands right and it's gonna be really cool and yeah so um you know, usually you might want to just keep your commands inside of your events package because, you know, it's technically still an event. But I would like to, I, I like to keep mine inside of, you know, a separate, um, a separate package for commands. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a package called commands. There we go. And we're going to make a new class inside of there. And we'll call it, uh, what do we, th let's, let's do for our first command. Let's do like a calculate command so we can do some simple calculations. All right. Okay, cool. And so, of course, whenever you're doing a, 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 an event, you need to have extends listener adapter. Okay. All right. So, our first command is going to be um, calculate. So, we'll do like whenever they type exclamation point calculate and then give it numbers, then it'll do that calculation for you and then give the result of the calculation. So, yeah, a very, a very simple command, but we're going to do that. So, basically, how do we get it to check? and see if the command was typed you know how do we get it to know if the calculate command was typed well we're going to use an if statement so uh, before we do that of course we actually need the event to be made so public void and suggestions pop up here we could use these and there we go so we have on guild message received so we can use that one and we're going to shorten this down here because I like that it's easier to reference if you have just one single letter so we're going to say um, if um, E dot get message dot get content raw which is turning into a string of course equals ignore case and here we put our command so if they type this command in then do whatever's inside of here right so what is the command we're gonna do exclamation point calculate and with my bots I usually like to do you know a dollar sign calculate or dollar sign you know in the command name but we're just gonna keep it simple well they're both simple but we're just gonna stick to what people usually use which is the exclamation point okay so now that we have that, we can get the bot to do something once they type that. So just to test it out, we'll do e dot uh, get channel dot send message. Um, this is the calculate command. All right, cool. So hopefully that works if we did it right. But before we uh, actually start it up, of course, we have to register it inside of our main method here. Um, so we'll do uh, jda dot add event listener new and then the class name. Uh, what's it called? calculate it right let me see okay good calculate and then it's going to automatically import it up here good okay so now we can run it and if you watched uh, a couple of two episodes ago i believe we actually showed you how to add the bot to a server so hopefully you have this bot added to a server so i'm going to pull up the server my test server right here okay all right and this is just the uh, i was testing the testing the bot earlier you know so just ignore this, pretend like it's empty. Um, so if we go ahead and type the command, calculate, let's see what happens. And it says, this is the calculate command. So awesome, it works, okay? So if I move this over here for a little bit, 
Okay, so if we go back here, and let's see what else we want to do. So now that we actually know that the calculate command works, we know how to make a command now. You know, we can stop this recording, but we're actually going to take it further. I'm not just going to end off here. Let's make something actually really cool. Um, let's get it to let's let's let our command do simple two simple things. We can either add two numbers or subtract two numbers. We're not going to do every single algebraic method we can ever do, but we're just going to do add and subtract. Okay, so how do we get it to know if the user wants to add and add and subtract, right? Well, I think that we should uh, add some parameters. So if they do exclamation point calculate and then space and then add, they if they either type add or subtract and then it'll know which one it needs to do. So basically parameters, right? So how do we get it to use parameters? Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to store the message inside of, an, inside of an array because then we can get every word inside of the, the uh, message that they type, which is good. So we can access the first word in the message, which should be the command. Then we can check the second word in the message, which should be add or subtract, right? So if you don't know what I mean, you'll see in a second. So string uh, message is equal to e.getMessage.getContentRaw.Split. And of course, that will split every word um, by space into a uh, array, basically into the array. Um, so yeah. Okay, cool. So now that we have this uh, message uh, array here, we don't need this anymore. So we'll do message dot. Uh, let's see here. Uh, message, and then the first word in the message is obviously going to be the first index, and of course it's zero based. So message index zero. Uh, dot equals ignore case calculate like that okay so this should do the same thing so we'll just go and test it out let's restart our bot okay we're gonna run calculate awesome so it still works okay so let's try adding the functionality for add and subtract so let's say if the user types add then um, it'll say this is the uh, add command and then if they type subtract it'll say this is a subtract command so so let's say um, if this second word in the message is equal to um, let's say add then then do this right but if the second word in the message let's see else if message so if the second word in the message is equal to um, or excuse me, third, oh yeah, second actually. So it's either gonna be add or subtract. So if the second word of the message is equal to sub, sub is short for subtract, of course, then you say, this is the subtract command. So subtract, okay, cool. So let's test that out. You know, it might come up with an error, we'll see. And don't get worried if you come across a lot of errors, cause you know, sometimes you just miss things and then stuff happens, you know? So let's go ahead and test this out. Uh, calculate add this is the add command calculate sub this is a subtract command right does it work oh even error okay so let's see what the error is um, out of bounds exception oh okay because I accidentally put message um, I put the index to set to be two but we're still checking the second word in the in the message that we typed of course so I meant to have one here, not two. So, yeah. So let's not restart because we know it's going to work anyway. It should. Let's not do that. Let's not check it. So anyway, let's move on. So let's say, um, what if they don't type add or subtract? Let's get it to do something. So we'll say, um, uh, if, we'll add it in front. Well, actually, I'll show you what happens if we add it at the end. We should get an error. So e.getChannel.SendMessage. Uh, no, 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 I said the wrong thing. I mean, so else if, um, if, um, message is equal to one, or no, no, if message is, hmm, or message dot length is equal to one, meaning there will only be one, one word inside of our array here or message, then run this to so e get channel dot send message, um, to use, oops, to use this command, type without brackets. Okay, and here's the example command. Calculate, uh, add, sub, first number, second number. 
Okay, dot Q. Awesome. So let's see what this little thing is. So is it always false? Hmm. If message dot length is equal to one, it shouldn't be always false, but we'll see. Why does it say that? We'll find out in a second. So if we go ahead and we start this up, and we do calculate add, let's make sure that one still works. Calculate sub. Okay, that one works too. So let's say calculate. So let's say if we don't provide add or sub, let's see what happens. Okay, nothing happens. That means we got an error. So let's check our error. So it says out of bounds exception. So that's an exception that happens whenever you try and access something that's not in the array. So um, basically, since it's at the end here, it basically thinks that the message is actually going to be bigger than one. So we actually have to move it up front to check it before any of these are checked. I don't know exactly why, but that's how it needs to be. So let's go ahead and take this here. Uh, we'll just uh, cut it and we'll paste it here. Remove the else. Add an else here. Awesome. So now it works. Hopefully, test it out. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run the command. Calculate. Awesome. So we can do that one works. So let's do calculate add. Awesome. So they should work now. All of them good. And yeah. So um, let's actually go back to our thing right here. So let's say what happens if we type instead of um, calculate add. Let's say we type something else and then add. Right. Um, let me show you what I mean. So blah 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 add. It'll actually still say this is the add, add command because we never specified it to check and see, you know, in the in the conditional here. We actually never specified it to check and see if the first word we typed was the command. We only specified it to check the second word that we typed. So that's a little weird, right? So let's make it more specific. So if they type calculate, then add, then run this piece of code here, basically, okay? So this works with anything for now, but now let's change it so it checks everything. So calculate. Um, message so if message um, one so if the first word in the message equals ignore case uh, calculate and the second word in the message is add then run this okay and that will fix our little problem there let's copy this and then paste it here so same thing for our subtract message and then up here too they could type anything and then it'll say to use this command blah 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 so let's try that out Right. So it still says it no matter what we type, right? Because we only specified to check the length of a message that we sent. We never specified to check and see if the message that we sent was actually the subtract message. Yeah. So hopefully that makes sense, you know. So now let's go ahead and restart this. And now it'll only run any of these if we actually type the calculate command with it, right? So let's try that out. So let's type uh, blah blah blah. So it doesn't do that anymore. So let's do calculate by itself. And now it says that. So let's do calculate add. Let's do a different command add. Okay, cool. So now it works just for calculate. That's good, right? So now that we have you know the basic stuff um, here, let's actually get it to actually calculate stuff, right? So um, let's do that. So let's get it to. We're gonna need more parameters, right? Because we need to provide. They need to provide inside of our command whether. Well, well, they need to provide. They need to provide the command. They need to provide whether it's adding or subtracting, and then they need to provide, excuse me, the two numbers that you want to add or, or add or subtract. So let's store that into two variables. So we'll do int number one is equal to message dot or message, and then we have to choose the index. So it'll be the third index. No, this it'll be the third word, but the second index because of course it's zero based. And then number two is equal to message uh, three. Oops, error here. Okay, so why do we have errors here? Well, if you hover over it, it says incompatible types, required integer, found string. So this is a string on the right side. So we need to somehow convert the um, number, which is a string, into an actual integer. So we can do that by, um, I believe, casting, you would call it. I'm not sure if you would call it casting in this situation because you're using a method from the integer class. But anyway, so you're doing integer parse int and then you would provide the string that you want to parse so we'll do message two there we go uh, same thing for here so integer parse int oops message three 
Okay, cool. So now we're storing the actual variables that we're adding or subtracting into two variables. So let's actually do our calculations now. So do e .get channel send message. Um, here is the result. Okay, and then we'll give the result of the calculation. So we'll do uh, we'll put in parentheses because you know order of operations and all that fun stuff. I don't think we need to, but there we go. So number one plus number two. Okay, cool. So let's see what happens here. Oh, we need to queue it, by the way. So um, let's go over this again. So if they type um, the calculate command in add and add at the, as the second parameter, then it will go ahead and run this, assuming it gives the two numbers at the end too. It'll still run it no matter if we have the two numbers at the end, which can be problematic, but we'll just keep it for now. So yeah, and then so let's go ahead and do this for the subtract command. All we gotta do is, you know, put a subtract sign instead. So we get a little message here, a warning message here. It says it's always false. Well, why is that? Well, if you think about it, it's kind of confusing, but it's always gonna be false because, well, if you think about it, the message dot length is always equal to one. That statement can always be false because we're setting these two integers here to be equal to the message um, indexes of two and three, which won't be true which means this won't be true because now this array has indexes of two and three, but here it says it only has an index length of just zero, right? So basically, it's, it's a little hard to explain, but um, what we have here refutes this here, okay? So what we need to do to fix this is actually move it here and then move it here. So we have to have it in both places because, you know, scope and all that fun stuff. Um, with scope meaning um, if you have an if if you have a declaration inside um, within curly brackets, you can't access it without inside of another place. Basically, yeah, I, I hate explaining stuff because I'm not good at it, but I try. So yeah, let's try running this. Okay, so let's pull up our stuff here. So calculate, add two two. So here's the result four. Awesome. So calculate, add, um, or no, we'll do subtract, of course. So three, two, one. So good, it works. So let's try a negative number, or let's try to generate a negative number. So we'll subtract um, two from three. So I should provide, wait, what? Oh, I meant, <laughs> I put negative three back in it. So calculate sub two minus, oh, you don't need to provide a minus, of course. So just two and three, and we get negative one. So good, that's how that works. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah. I probably explained this really bad, but you know, we made a cool little command here. We know how to make commands now. All you gotta do is have an if, if statement checking the um, message, um, and yeah. So, you know, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you, have, if you have any questions at all, just leave a comment and I'll help you. Also, check in the description. I'll leave a link to our code snippet here. This will provide all the code from today's episode, so you can check it out and bookmark it, use it as a reference, whatever you need to do. And yeah, so yeah, uh, subscribe if you want to see more, and peace.